whatever. It's so. literally like us. Well, that's horrifying. The disturbing art of AI. From next bow of love. Let's have it. Next B. burning skull. The disturbing art of AI. It's Tuesday night. Wildfires range over West Coast, California. CD Projekt Red announces DLC. Nice. And over in the furthest reaches of cyberspace, a musical artist named Super Composite makes a discovery. She experiments with AI-driven art, made possible through inputting text prompts into machine learning systems like Stable Diffusion, Dolly, and Midjourney. And like anything, at first, everything seems to be all right. Animals, landscapes, trees, the human form, the potential of AI-driven art is endless. And so she decides to push the boundaries of what this system can do, and inputs the following. And, uh, the last name of Marlon Brando, a prompt that will surely test the absolute limits of the capability of artificial intelligence. In what way? Curiously, she enters a modifier, negative one, also known as a negative prompt weight, which informs the AI that they're seeking a picture as conceptually far away from the prompt as possible. To be frank, it's an interesting thought experiment because it makes you wonder how exactly AI views the world and what it considers the opposite of everyday things to be. I mean, what do we consider the opposite of everyday things to be? That's a very interesting question. If I asked question. you what the opposite of birds are, what would you say? What would you say the opposite of a bird? is something that doesn't fly to a grand ground animal, but then would it be the opposite of an animal? I would say the opposite of a bird is a fish. Psst. Just while Nexpo's kind of doing his, you know, loady thing, I thought I'd just quickly interject and just give a shout out to today's patron of the day. It's Jen Sheridan. Thank you so much, Jen, for being a patron. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all my patrons. If you'd like to become a patron, you can become a patron for as little as a pound a month. So much bonus content. Anyway, let's get back to the terrifying AI horror generated art of just nightmares. Cheers, Nexpo. What does AI Super think? Super Composite sends off her prompt and lies in wait. The minutes tick by without much concern, until, finally... Oh. The fuck is that? What the fuck? Innocuous, yet interesting, that the opposite of Marlon Brando is perceived to be an abstract skyline. Written on it appears to be two words. 
Digita and Pentix, and in the background appears to be text on a white page. Curious, she ponders if the inverse of this photo would result in a picture of Marlon Brando. Yeah. And so she inputs another prompt and sends it off oh. into the vast unknown. Very interesting, very spooky. What's it gonna come back with? This is terrifying. Oh. Before them were four images of a highly uncanny, older woman with severe rosacea on her cheeks. She bears prominent cheekbones, has dark colored hair, and can be seen within a living room, in what appears to be a hospital, in a bathtub, and against a green wall with just one discernible word above her. William, no. Nope. L-O-A-B. Oh. Or Lobe. Lobe. Over the next few days, Super experiments with their creation, Jesus curious about Christ. why and how Lobe exists. She eventually employs a method named AI image crossbreeding to combine one of Loeb's photos with a completely separate one that her friend created. However, instead of this combination resulting in Loeb's demise or innocuous photos involving this tunnel, what comes to fruition is something a bit more grotesque. Great. Through some kind of emergent statistical accident, Something about this woman is adjacent to extremely gory and macabre imagery and the distribution of the AI's world knowledge. Since Loeb was found using negative prompt weights, her gestalt is made from a collection of traits that are equally far away from something, but her combined traits are still a cohesive concept for the AI, and almost all descendant images contain a recognizable Loeb. In nearly every image, Loeb is distinct and embodies the physical manifestation of the repulsive and uncanny. This AI is somehow creating images that perfectly encapsulates what terrifies us, wrapped up in a myriad of situations like family portraits, disturbing. loitering within an office building, looming over children like a reincarnation of Jesus Christ, and even standing by after what appears to be a murder by her what own hand. What the actual fuck is this shit? But it doesn't stop there, as the correlation between Loeb and the idea of malformed, mutilated imagery was merely beginning to take root. This is horrifying. The Angel Hallway plus Loeb also produced art with such copious gore that probably very few people want to see them, but here are two. I don't feel comfortable posting the most disturbing ones. They're borderline images of dismembered, screaming children. These are AI generators. There's something moving to me about these grotesque scenes and the desperation, panic, and sadness that they convey. Again, these are produced with other images as inputs and no text. They're the result of crossbreeding of images of Loeb with pictures of other things. What the images the that result from crossing fuck? Loeb with other images can in turn be crossbred with other images. The AI can latch onto the idea of Loeb so well that she can persist through generations of this type of crossbreeding, even without using the original image. This From here, her journey down the low rabbit hole continues. As referenced, her persistence in existing within each resulting photo is striking, and even when they try to get rid of her, to distort her out of existence, she remains in immensely uncomfortable scenarios. Who is Loeb? With a child clinging to the human form. What the fuck? Locked in time as a clay statue. Deformed by unknowable technology. Lurking, watching from the dark. Trapped within a Stephen Gamel canvas painstakingly out of place. Abandoned as a lifeless child. Trapped in the deep blue. And frozen in eternal pain. This is just from inputting the word lobe and other things into an AI-generated system. 
What the fuck? I was ripping Loba parts and putting her back together. She's an emergent island in a latent space that we don't know how to locate with text queries. But for the AI, Loba was an equally strong point of convergence as a verbal concept. The big lesson for me here with Loeb is that image prompting can essentially be used as your custom parameter to question the AI's form of thought. You can produce original styles and characters that you literally discover. Negative prompting can help you find emergent accidents, much like Loeb, too. This is largely where her thread ends. She claims that she'll update it with further pictures of Loeb as they're created, and that's a promise that's held true. To this day, they're still adding to it, and this thread, in its entirety, serves as an interesting dive down a surreal, uncanny, and dreamlike rabbit hole regarding this undisclosed AI art generator and its space. bizarre affixation with this one specific face. Writing this down. As we can recall, the original prompt referenced the inverse of Barlin Brando, and the resulting image was nothing like any human would logically expect it to be. It was an abstract skyline. So how did this come from this? Uncanny images. Nice. What the fuck? This is horrific. I feel very uneasy. Tink, I'd leave if I was you. Watching AI generated images. Nexpo video. And it's Why horrific. Are AI creations so unsettling. What is it about these images that causes this inexplicable dread? The program I was utilizing to make this slideshow and throughout this entire video was Stable Diffusion. And in the process, I learned quite a few things about it. When you make your input too specific, you may happen upon exactly what you're looking for. The AI is, in a way, constrained by what you feed it. However, if you take away the specifics in your prompt and really allow it to spread its wings and create something for you, well, that's when things get interesting. Anomalies much like Loeb await, hidden away within the confines of something called latent space, or the medium in which AI recreates the features it's been fed. You may have seen other examples of this idea before, notably with a Twitter thread from June in which this person discovers what appears to be Krungus. a after inputting a completely made up word. Krungus, they called it which is pretty creepy and is even something you can discover yourself. But it isn't just disturbing, off-putting creatures and faces that this system excels at. And the span of AI's weirdness isn't always as straightforward as entering a text prompt that we know will give us something scary. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite examples of artificial strangeness dates back years. So let's pause. This is actually fucking me up. And let's head back. A 
In 2019, an anonymous programmer going by none other than the girl who talks to AI set out to create a simulation of the human brain by utilizing a system known as a Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN for short. GANs essentially become trained through machine learning to take in millions of existing stimuli in order to recreate an idea. In this case, the system was tasked with creating a face, and after prowling through millions of existing photos, it spit out this one. The programmer, however, had a curious idea. Since the AI's entire worldview is constrained by the sum of its inputs, what would happen if they were to slowly forget the very thing it was trained for? What you mean? And so, with the AI's neurons visualized to the right, she shuts them off one by one until this face distorts into something completely unrecognizable. Sent into Alzheimer's, of course. I've seen these. And she's making the AI forget. Just like Alzheimer's makes you forget. The parallels between synthetic deconstruction and afflictions of the human mind are clear. And this project serves as a curious looking glass into the realm of neuroscience and how we as individuals perceive life around us. The way that face slowly distorts into a faded memory leaving oh the remaining neurons scrambling to fill the void, leaves us with an end result that oh is haunting. My and to this day, this remains as one of the most fascinating AI curiosities that I have ever it's seen. It's literally like us. Well, that's horrifying. Oh my God. Loeb is an eerie case study, someone that has successfully cemented herself in the online sphere. And while the reason behind her conception and why this AI somehow latched on to her oddly specific facial features and tied them to macabre, disturbing imagery is currently unclear, what is certain is that her persistence has left us with an interesting revelation. We know that AI knows how to create subjectively beautiful synthetic art through mere text prompts, generating some of the most striking examples of the sheer potential of modern technology. With that said, who's to say that it can't excel at the opposite? Relatively, the adoption and potential of synthetic art is merely beginning. And with the advent of Loeb freaking so many of us out, what else is hidden away within the vast abyss of AI? And how will this impact us? I'm actually... Them. I'm terrified now. I would... I mean, I'm just... Fucking hell. I'm kind of viewing that as AI... Views us as monsters and so if ai got intelligent enough ai is gonna wipe us out man we're fucked we are so we are going to give birth to ai and ai is going to kill us that's terrifying that's horrifying that's horrid i'm concerned concerned to say the least but i'm glad that i watched that but fucking hell Jesus Christ. But that Alzheimer's thing, that's fucking crazy. That is fucking crazy. Something completely unrecognizable. This is insane. As she removes the inputs, much like as our minds remove memory for Alzheimer's. The Crazy. parallels between synthetic deconstruction and afflictions of the human mind are clear. 
and this project serves as a curious looking glass into the realm of neuroscience and how we as individuals perceive life around us. The way that face slowly distorts into a faded memory, leaving the remaining neurons scrambling to fill the void, leaves us with an end result that is haunting. And to this day, this remains as one of the most fascinating AI curiosities that I have ever seen. Very, very creepy. Very, very creepy.